Hello guys. Um, hello guys. Welcome to your meditation session. So we are going to begin today's class. I think um, we can, we are all ready for today's session. So sit comfortably wherever you are. Keep the back neck straight. And as you feel ready, very gently close the eyes. Close the eyes and focus on your breathing. Just observe the natural flow of your breath. Observe the breath as it flows in and as it flows out. Don't make any changes to your breathing. Simply stay with the breath. Slowly begin to turn your attention inwards. Slowly shift the attention to the body. Become aware of your body and be in your posture. Allow the posture to align and adjust itself. In your final position, you should be both comfortable and stable. Now, gently come back to your breathing once again. And slowly begin to deepen your breathing. Slow, long and deep inhalations. Slow, long and deep exhalations. Relax your mind and prepare yourself for chanting three times, followed by three shantis. Take a deep breath in for all. Oh. 
Shanti 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 Feel the vibrations. Join both the palms together. Begin to rub both the palms. Put the palms on the hands. Very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms. You can do open up your eyes, coming back to the hand on your face. And So let us begin our meditation session for today. So in previous session, we have talked about what meditation is. So by now it should be clear to you what you are doing. And in these classes, what your aim and target should be. And you should also be clear about this thing that meditation is not the final step. You are going somewhere when you are doing meditation. And it is very important to keep this in mind because most of the people, they get stuck at one point or the other, right? So suppose I will take the example of fasting. So especially in today's world, people are just stuck in asanas or stuck in pranayam practices, right? They, because asanas are where, asanas, pranayam, shat karma, these practices are very engaging in their nature. One just wants to practice those. And if you have been practicing asans, maybe in these sessions, or you have practiced them before, and now you have joined these sessions, you will see that there is no end to asans, right? If I have good flexibility, then I can do a little bit better. There is always scope of betterment. If I'm doing pranayama, I'm holding my breath, there is always scope for me to hold the breath for a longer period of time, right? So if you are approaching asanas, pranayams from the perspective of a stepping stone, it becomes easier for you to move to the higher levels because you are doing all of these practices for something more than that, right? Similarly, in the case of meditation, meditation is not the end. You are doing it because it is taking you somewhere, right? So keeping this thing in mind is very important, right? I'm not saying that you shouldn't practice meditation or you shouldn't be dedicated towards it. Just be careful. Don't get stuck. Okay? It happens in the case of meditation also. I know we have less examples to see today when it comes to meditation. But yes, a lot of times people get stuck in meditation also, not realizing they have to go ahead, right? So if you see a particular practice as a stepping stone, it will be easier for you to move past it. For it, it will be easier for you to allow that practice to fulfill its purpose and then you can very well let it be no matter what level you are at, it's okay. I'm not saying don't practice asanas. I'm just saying that you can then keep the practice limited to a certain period of time and you can devote more time to meditation or you can devote more time to other practices. So coming back to the point. So today I will be sharing some general guidelines, right? And uh, if possible, if you have the time, I will introduce the first meditation technique that we are going to do. And tomorrow I will give you all the history background of this technique. So first let me talk of a few general guidelines which will help you to, which will go a very long way. Right, let's just put it in this way. For your meditation journey, it will go a very long way. So first thing, very sorry. First thing which is important is your yeah, um, uh, very common question that I get in my classes is time of practice and duration of practice. Okay, so first I will address this. 
then I will talk about the space and everything, how it should be. So time and duration of practice. Time of practice can be any time for the first one year. All right, try to keep that time fixed. Suppose I'm practicing in the evening. So I will keep the evening time fixed. But how like uh, for beginner level, it's not necessary. Should I wake up at four, six, right? When you are a beginner, your main goal becomes to maintain continuity of your practice, right? So now suppose 4 a.m. waking up at 4 a.m. is not suitable, conducive, practical for me in my day-to-day -day routine. So don't. I would say that don't. Don't push yourself. Suppose I say 4 a.m. is ideal, right? So what you will do? One day you wake up, two days you make effort, wake up, third day you keep on sleeping. So that day meditation you will not do after 4 a.m., no? Right? So you will skip that day of meditation. So in order to overcome this barrier, do not fix the time of your, like what time is ideal. Do not allow these things to come on the mind. Whatever time is most practical for you, fix that time and try to keep that time same every day. Right? Duration. Duration of meditation. What it should be. Right? Again, what is practical for you? If five minutes is practical for you, good. Go ahead. If half an hour is practical for you, good. Go ahead. One hour, go ahead. Five hours, go ahead. There is, for beginner, for first one year, you have to find your own space, right? So, if five minutes are practical for you, go ahead. You have to maintain the continuity for first one year. All right. Now, second question that is very generally asked in classes is the place of practice. Place of practice plays a very important role during meditation. It is very important for you to set up your space because Let's admit it, meditation, you will require much more motivation than asanas, right? Asana, you will still be very excited to do practice. But meditation, your motivation levels will be considerably low, right? So what you have to do when you are like, uh, when you have to push yourself for meditation, you need to set up the space. So go ahead, buy the mat that you really like, buy the color that you really like, you know, set up your space in such a way that it really, you know, pulls you towards it, right? Maybe if you like some lighting, go ahead. Uh, if you like candles, go ahead, buy them, right? Set your space correctly, right? Just make sure that the place is well ventilated, right? And I would highly suggest if it is some corner, it would be very, very ideal, right? Because, you know, corners are much better than sitting in the center, right? But again, if you want to sit in the center, there is no restriction. Whatever place you like, go ahead and sit there. Right? Corner, because generally it's assumed somebody is living with you, right? Maybe your parents, your siblings, your partner, spouse. So it creates a lot of disturbance for them also. They cannot, uh, you know, uh, use that space for the time you're meditating. So corner is better, right? In that regard, in purpose, practic uh, practical purpose regard, right? But go ahead. If you have, if you're living alone, you have entire space to yourself, you can sit in between also totally up to you, right? Uh, next thing, which is very important is the clothing. Right, so clothing will also go for a very long way when you sit for meditative practices. Try to wear clothes which are made out of natural material. Okay, try to wear clothes which are loose. Okay, so it's very sad to see today that when we go for buying clothes for yoga practices, we see that um, uh, we are getting tight fit synthetic clothing. Right. And, you know, a lot of people believe that that will help them, aid them in their flexibility as well, right? But that is not the case. If you are wearing loose clothing, 
made out of natural material it will support your practice very very deeply right so try to keep these few things in mind you should ideally sit on the ground when you are doing meditation okay and uh, always keep a barrier between your body and the ground which is again your mat or you can go ahead and buy a dari dari is a, like smaller in size generally you can find it in large size also but go for a small dari small in size again it's made out of natural material just take care of this thing right and you can go ahead and use that dari to give your like uh, practice right try to keep the place same and uh, whatever you are practicing on the mat or the dari the same right if i sit in one part of the room and then i sit on the other i keep changing it one day that one day this one day here one day there then whatever work i am doing it is getting accumulated in some way in that space so when you change the space again it's not able to build up that much right so try to keep the space also fixed now let's come to some of the asanas which will be very helpful for you when you are doing yoga practices and also some of the mudras so i'm not going to teach you what are mudras what is their purpose how we can do different mudras no what is asan how we can do different asan what are the opening up practices what are the variations no i'm simply going to write down the name of some asans and mudras i will be able to show you to show you the mudras that you can adopt for meditation all right so first let me share my screen uh, and give you the name of some of the asanas that you can go ahead and adopt right so when it comes to sitting the first and easiest position is sukhasan sukhasan this is the cross legged position so you guys can uh, look these up right these sit in postures you can look them up you will be easily able to find the pictures on google okay sukhasan easiest sukh means like pleasant only right so sukhasan when you sit down on the ground you generally cro cross your legs when you sit down right so this asana is called sukhasan it is the easiest somebody who struggles to sit somebody who struggles to uh you know in general is having any kind of knee problem also sukhasan is still okay other sitting asans they are having very high pressure on the knees they giving you a lot of pressure on the knees so rather than going for that you can go ahead and choose sukhasan these asans that i'm giving it will be really good if you perform them on the ground right but in case somebody is having very severe knee issues they are not able to sit you can go ahead and give them a chair as well okay it is it is all right as long as they are able to maintain continuity in the practice it is okay right but our main goal our main target is to maintain the continuity right chair is also okay but i'm assuming all of you who are watching this video you are perfectly healthy perfectly fine so try to sit on the ground in these various asanas right so next asan is swastik asan swastik all right swastik asan is also another posture that you can go ahead adopt so you can google search it the technique is very easy it is very close to how sukhasan is so it's not that taxing on the knees as well uh one more thing that i want to say before i give you few more asans you just have to choose one all right so don't get worried if you are not able to do any of them you just have to find the right one for you like meditation you have to find the right one for your personality in that same way you have to find the right posture for you only one is required okay third one 
This is called Ardh Padmasana. At the Padmasan, so this is half lotus. Again, guys, you can look up the technique. These are not very hard techniques also. So you can easily understand how to do them. Ardha Padmasana, half lotus. If you are very flexible, your knees are fine. You can go for the full lotus, which is called Padmasana. This is A. Last one is A only. A S A N A. Padmasana or lotus posture. So you can go ahead do lotus also. Most of the yogis you will see they sit in lotus only. There is no compulsion, but this position is very beneficial and conducive for meditation because your body gets locked. <coughs> Next position that you can adopt is Bhatrasana. Bhadrasan, this is the pose that you take when you do butterfly. So don't do butterfly when you take this pose. This pose has stability in it. There is no movement of the th uh, your thighs and knees up and down. Bhadrasan, I'm just explaining the position. Okay. It is the butterfly position, but you are not doing butterfly. In it. Okay. And sixth and last position. Vajrasana. V A J R A S A. Vajrasana. Vajrasana is the only asana that you can do after eating food. Right? So, if you want to do something after you eat food, this asana you can do. This is very good for digestion. And this is very, again, this will place immense pressure on your knees. So, be careful. Only healthy individual should perform Vajrasana. This is very good for digestion, like I said. And a very good pose to sit in, especially if you have the tendency to fall asleep in meditation. All right. Okay. So these are the six postures that I would say that if you are able to do one of them, it is good. Uh, if somebody is struggling too much, again, chair is also fine. But try to sit on the ground for you guys, for your own personal practice, try to sit on the ground. All right. So I'll just stop, stop sharing my screen. Now, uh, sitting I have told you about, right? Always make sure that your back and neck are straight. Try to roll. Really what we do when we sit, we arch the lower back too much. So the weight shifts to the lower back because of this reason. So when this happens, what you actually have to do is you have to exhale, push your tummy in and you have to shift the center of the weight to the hips because the hips are in contact with the ground, right? So hips will be able to manage the weight, but lower back, it will give you lower back pain, right? If you are uh, like on your like if the excessive arch in the lower back is existing, then you have to finish that so that the weight of the body doesn't come on the lower back. Okay, it's very important, right? So you have to take care of these things. Let's talk about the hand position. So in hand positions also, there are some things which are very, very important, which will make your practice more fruitful. So first hand position, it is very common. I join the tips of my index finger and thumb and my palms are facing upwards. Remaining three fingers are normal, right? And my palm facing upwards. This you, this hand you will place on the knees, 
right so with both the hands you make this mudra and then you place the palms on the hands on the knees palms facing upwards all right so if you like it don't do this don't do this right this all right tip tips should touch okay now second mudra that you can go ahead and do is gyan mudra right so right now previously i was asking you to keep the hands like this now you can go for down hands are down right placed on the knees okay this is second mudra that you can do if you don't feel comfortable like this you can turn, very well turn your hand down okay uh next mudra that you can do is you bring your hand like this and bring the index finger down here right and thumb is pressing this index finger right so this mudra it is called vayu mudra right so you can go ahead adopt this again palms face upwards right okay so three i have already told you i have few more right so some people they don't prefer to keep their hands like this right so for those people they can also place their hand in the middle they can place the right hand on top of the left hand like this yeah so like like this you keep the hands and then you take them down and you place them in between right over here right so this is called uh, like these two mudras they are very important right so if you don't feel like doing the other mudras you can go ahead place the right hand or the left hand on the top whichever one is comfortable for you and place this hand down all right okay so these are the next two mudras that you can do and one last mudra that you can perform which is very very conducive for meditation is when you place the left hand on top of the right hand and then you join the tips of the thumb together right this mudra is also very conducive for practice left hand on top of the right hand tips of the thumbs join together and like this you can place your hands in the middle only right so these are a few mudras again uh, i was able to show you so i will not give too many names it gets confusing for students you have to choose only one which you like the most and you can go ahead and continue your practice that now coming back let's come back to today's technique we are going to miss it for a few minutes to practice today's technique is called anapan all right i will write the name down give you the break up of the word what it means what it is tomorrow for today all you have to do is follow my instruction we are going to observe the natural breath the pure breath okay so in pranayam we change the breath change the rhythm of the breath but in anapan we don't change the rhythm of the breath in meditation we don't change we observe right so we are going to observe the natural flow of the breath meaning when the inhalation is going in however it is going in i allow it to go in i simply observe and when the exhalation is happening then i just allow it i observe right so where do you have to observe this breath in this triangular region right so the area above your lips and the right and the left nostril you have to observe the breath as it moves in and out of your body to this body part right now what happens generally students when they close their eyes they start they are not able to understand the breathing so what they start to they start deepening their breath right so that they are able to feel the breath now i ask you to observe the breath here but what will you observe if you are not able to feel the breath all together right so what most students do is begin to deepen their breathing this is incorrect you have to observe the breath as it is you have to work on sharpening the concentration of it that is the work you have to do not the change of the breath all right how you have to understand the breath is flowing through the sharpening of the concentration right okay so it is a very very simple technique tomorrow i will discuss more about it today let's just sit for some time and practice this meditation right 
So wherever you are, sit comfortably, keeping the back neck straight. And when you feel ready, very gently close your eyes. Gently close the eyes and just start observing your breath. For now, we are only going to generally connect with our breathing. Let's begin to turn your attention in by focusing on the natural Now slowly turn your attention to your body. Take a few moments to just align, adjust yourselves. Whatever portion you choose at the end, your body, entire body should be comfortable and safe. That's the only goal, that's the only target. In the posture, take a strong mental resolution that I will not move my body until the end of the practice. And now come back to your breathing, focusing on the triangular region, through the nostrils in the area above your lips. Just watch each and every breath as you inhale and exhale. Just feel the breath as it passes this portion of the body, right, left nostril and the area above the lips. Observing the breath like a gatekeeper. If the breath is slow, it is slow. If the breath is deep, it is deep. Long, it is long. All you have to do is simply observe the breath without making any changes to it. Each and every time your mind wanders, very gently bring it back to your breathing.
continuously bring your mind back to the breath. Remaining alert, aware, and attentive throughout the practice. Keep observing the breath and continuously bring the mind back. Not even one breath should enter or exit your system without your knowledge. Not even one breath should pass by without you being aware of it. Remaining alert, aware, and attentive at each and every moment. <coughs> Keep coming back to your breath. And now slowly suspend your practice. Slowly suspend the practice. And see how you feel as we are about to close today's session. Make sure that your back and neck are straight. Eyes are comfortably closed. If you feel the need, you can slowly move your fingers and move your toes. Prepare yourself for chanting Om one time, followed by three shantis. Deep breath in. Shanti Shanti Shanti
Join both the palms together and gently bow your head down. We're going to take a few moments for a sense of gratitude for everything and everyone we do. Food, clothes, and shelter. This feel the gratitude. And now begin to rub both the palms together. Place the palms on your eyes. We're going to do this one more time. Rub both your palms together properly. Place the palms on your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms, begin to open up your eyes. Feel free to spread this energy on your entire body, wherever you feel the need. Spread this energy on your body. And namaste to everyone. So guys, today for the first, the first class, we got a glimpse into what you have to do to develop your concentration. So we are going to meet tomorrow. We are going to continue this, this specific practice for upcoming few days. And then we are going to change our practice. So try to deepen this practice as much as possible in the upcoming classes because this is a very pure and important technique, right? And uh, tomorrow I will address some general queries, some general things that pop up in the mind or which you might have experienced today also and you are struggling how I have to navigate through this or how I have to, uh, you know, work on this. And I will give you meditations approach on how you can tackle these things, right? So take care, guys. Enjoy your day and bye-bye.